Lord, I say, the Father, this is real. Will you watch over me? Will you raise them up to be strong? I don't, I, I'm just a man with flesh. This is what you call for in your scriptures. You said they wore studs and fringes, they got it on. You said they are follow the law, they doing it. You said under your house shine, they ought to love one another. Are they doing it? fed black people out of the kindness of their heart. The Arabs have never did anything for black people out of the kindness of their hearts. What are we really talking about? But guess what? They fed themselves. And you know how they fed themselves? Off of you, black man. That's how they eat. You want to know why they own all the chicken spots? Is it that Arabs make better chicken than black people? Everybody knows Arabs do not make better chicken than black people. But somehow, they have all the chicken spots. You want to know why? Because Arabs come to America and they fall under the same banner that every nation does, white supremacy. Arabs come here and they do exactly what white people do to us. They look at you as less than. And then the whole time, black people, we are so genuine. We are so sincere that we think that we're finding the truth. And there's many brothers back here that used to be Muslim. There are brothers back here that used to be devout Muslims and five percenters. And guess what? We were sincere and we were looking for the truth. And we found out the hard way that our compassion and our search for the truth was being used against us. The Arabs are always using black people to build their own. That money you paying in them chicken spots is not sending black kids to college. That money is sending Arab kids to college. Those are the ones that's protesting on the campuses right now. Wasting your money. You understand? That's what's happening right now. You understand? And it's happening because we have become Muslim. We have become Christian. That's why it's happening. And the God of the Bible told us, you are not allowed to serve the gods of the other people. You are not allowed to serve the other religions. We don't have a religion. If you're black, Hispanic, or Native American, and if you follow any religion, you are wrong. The same way I was wrong. The same way we all were wrong back here. This Bible has nothing to do with religion. It is the solution to fixing our community. Somebody answer this for me. What's the problem in the black community? If you can sum up the problem in the black community with one answer, what is the problem? You want to answer it, brother? One, one thing. Well, it's definitely several. We know that. But if you can sum it up with one thing, unity. Give him a hand. No unity. No love. No respect for each other. That's right, brother. And guess what? The Bible has a solution to that. Give me Zephaniah 2 and 1. What you said is the truth. You see it for yourself. You are older, brother, so you didn't see it for a minute. Black people, we lack unity. You understand? What is going to fix the problem in our communities? Laws. We don't have a money problem. We don't have a political problem. We don't have a literacy problem. We have a morality problem. We don't have a standard on how we treat each other. We treat each other any old kind of way. And then you expect for there to be peace and unity when there's no standard on how we treat each other and talk to each other. You're gonna always have shootings and violence. You're gonna always have child molestation and rape. You're gonna always have drug addiction and selling drugs without a moral standard. We have to have a set of rules. And this brother just said right here, the biggest problem in our community is the lack of unity, love, and respect for each other. Read what you got. Zephaniah chapter two, verse one. Gather yourselves together. The Bible says gather yourselves together. Now here's the thing. Don't the Christian church teach that we all gotta come together? That's what Martin Luther King told us. Martin Luther King told black people that we got to love and sit down with white people at the table of brotherhood. Look, the white woman shaking her hand, you love to hear that. The problem is Martin Luther King was a false prophet. We should have never sat down with white people because white people have never loved black people. They've never cared about us. And furthermore, 
God told us to gather ourselves together, not with everybody, but with who? Gather together, oh nation not desire. Oh who? Nation not desire. You know what the word that we use today for nation? When the Bible says nation, there's a word that we use today. Anybody know? Race. That's what it means in the Bible when it says nation. It's talking about your race, who you are. And the Lord is telling us to gather together. Oh, nation, not desired. Oh, race, not desired. It's not hard. What race of people are not desired in this place? Baltimore, look, you think Baltimore suffering is special? Baltimore looks just like Chicago. Chicago looks just like D.C. D.C. looks just like Philly. Philly looks just like Richmond. Richmond looks just like Memphis. Memphis looks just like L.A. L.A. looks just like Kingston. Kingston looks just like Rio de Janeiro. Wherever we are on the face of the earth, we are the people not desired. We are the race that is always mistreated, that is always abused by the police, that is always stereotyped and profiled. You hear about that story of the white couple in West Virginia that adopted five black kids. This white couple in West Virginia, a couple minutes down the road, and they had those five adopted black kids in slavery. Right here in 2024. You understand, they kept the white, they kept the black kids in the barn and made them do slavery, slave work. I ain't making this up, this is in 2024. The news came out yesterday. You can type it in on your phone. You want to tell me that we are all together and we're all the same and we're all loved? Tell me at one point in American history, have black people ever done to white people what they've done to us? Never. Say it again. Never. 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 While we argued about Allah and, and religion, let's talk about what something was real. When have black people ever did to white people what white people done to us? We've never done to them what they've done to us. You understand? And we've never done anything to them to warrant their treatment and hatred. That's because the Bible is trying to tell you, man. You're trying to join together with the wrong people. You're trying to love the wrong people. You're following these religions and making yourself servants and slaves to a people that hate you. This is why God said this. Read it again. Zephaniah chapter 2. Gather yourselves together. Gather together. Oh nation, not desire. This is what the Bible's talking about. And this is why they push Islam on us. This is why they push Christianity on us. This is why they push the Roman Catholic Church. You know why? Because if black people got rid of the religion, we would look at this Bible and do what it takes to be supreme. Somebody answer this question for me. Is white supremacy real? He said, of course. Is white supremacy real? It's real. How do you fight white supremacy? He said, ownership. That's a good answer. How do you fight white supremacy? You said recirculating the back dollar. That's another answer. Here's what you need. The only way you can fight supremacy is supremacy. And the problem, I know that sounds strange. You see how much our minds are, are foreign? Black people hear the word supremacy, and now all of a sudden, oh, oh hold up, that's a little too revolutionary. That's a little too militant. The only way you can fight supremacy is supremacy. You know what it's like trying to fight supremacy with equality? That's like you fighting the fight in the boxing ring, and all you're doing is blocking. Name me one boxer that ever won a fight with just blocking. It don't exist. You can't win a fight just blocking. If somebody strikes you, you have to strike back. And the Bible is telling us the way we strike back is like this. Read. Zephaniah chapter 2, gather yourselves together, gather together, O nation, not desire. That's how you fight supremacy. Right. That's how you fight white supremacy. That's how you strike back. We've been following the Christian line of fighting supremacy with equality, and we just in the ring blocking and taking hits. We got to strike back. You understand? Martin Luther King lied. He didn't block at all. He just told us to be open for abuse. 
You understand? He told you stick your chin out and let the white man do whatever the hell he want to you. That's not what Christ taught. That's not what Christ taught at all. Christ taught that you got to come together so they can't do that to you. Why do you think Christ said come together? Why do you think God said that? You got to remember this Bible is practical knowledge. So now let's find out. Right. Because of Martin Luther King's lies, man. Let's find out what's the practical reason for black people to come together. Because this Bible has information. Information that is practical. I'll tell you how. The, the practical application of us coming together is for us to be supreme. It's for us to fight back against the war on us. And I'm not talking about going and storm the Capitol like the white terrorists did on January 6th. I'm talking about, you know what's revolutionary? This is what you should take from this. If you are black, Hispanic, or Native American, the most revolutionary thing that you can do is give your love exclusively to your people. That's the most revolutionary thing you could ever do. To say, I'm only going to give my love to my own people. But guess what? You can't do that as a Muslim. You can't do that as a Christian. You can't do that as a Rastafarian. You can't do that as a Jehovah's Witness and a Mormon. You can only do that as an Israelite. God's chosen people. God's special people according to the Bible. We are God's special people. And you should show it. You should prove it. You do that by loving each other. Come get a flyer, man. Come get a flyer and learn how to be militant. Come learn how to love your people. That's what they don't want. They don't want us to love each other. That's why they turn black men and black women against each other. They turn the old generation against the young. They turn the west side against the east side. The north side against the south. Shalom, sis. That's why they put so much light skin versus dark skin. Black versus Latino. That's right, brother. Straight hair, curly hair. That's right. The brother said the Willie Lynch letter. They understand how to stop supremacy. You understand that we got to get our supremacy back. We don't want equality. We want supremacy. We want to be able to raise our children with no fear. We want to be able to raise our children with a moral standard and raise strong families and a strong neighborhoods and communities and a strong nation. Yasha Allah, princes and princesses of the power, according to the Bible. Shalom Baltimore, we are the Israelite School of Universal Practical. Yeah. Babylon is falling In the bullshit, that lying nigga in the pool.